This is a rocket proposal by Chinese launch startup Cosmoleap in 2024. Here's another one from China's state-owned space conglomerate Cask, and this one called Legion 3 is from Caspace, a launch company based in the southern city of Guangzhou. There are at least a dozen such projects in China from a variety of domestic launch companies. Most of them have one thing in common. They look similar to SpaceX's designs, either the Falcon 9 or Starship. Now, why is this? I've been asked this question countless times, and the internet tends to mock the Chinese for this, linking this to copycat culture. But the reality is more complex. It's more nuanced and frankly, just much more interesting. So in this video, let's dive into why China has decided to follow the path of Elon Musk's rockets and why some of these reasons are very China specific. We are in 2015. China has just started opening up its space sector to private initiatives. Rocket scientists, space industry executives are now able to leave their jobs in state-owned enterprises and found their own rocket company. And this is what many of them do, like Roger Zhang, who founded Landspace, Huo Liang, who founded Deep Blue Airspace, and many others. And this is why there is a surge in the number of launch startups in subsequent years. These companies have raised money from investors, and their staff is experienced due to their background in the national space industry. These companies want to design reusable rockets to cater for the growth and demand for launch, notably in China, but also abroad. The issue is that they have little to no experience in reusing rockets. On the other hand, this was a technology in which the US had a significant advance with the space shuttle, which was eventually phased out in 2011. There were also certain experiments like the Delta Clipper, but most importantly, there was SpaceX founded by Elon Musk and which by the second half of the 2010s was going from one success to another. And this brings us to the first reason why Chinese launch companies have gone for a Falcon 9 design. It's a proven design. They know it works. And when you're a startup with limited funding and you're competing against a dozen other domestic challengers in a cutthroat environment, there is a tendency to go for what works first and to change the design later. And this is how many Chinese launch startups have ended up with designs with seven to nine reusable engines on the first stage, deployable landing legs, grid fins, and landing on a drone ship. You also see this tendency outside of China when you look at the architecture of, say, European space company Maya Space, or Russia's Amur rocket, or even Relativity Space's Terran R. But there's another reason why this emulation of SpaceX is especially present in China. China is an isolated market for a variety of geopolitical reasons that I've discussed in previous videos, and this makes it nearly impossible for Western satellites to launch on Chinese rockets, just as it is unlikely for Chinese payloads to launch on Western launch vehicles. And this market distortion has one major consequence. It means that Chinese launch vehicles are not SpaceX competitors. When you're a company planning to capture a piece of the market from the incumbent player, you generally need to perform as well or even better. And this pushes you to disrupt the market by trying new designs. But there isn't this incentive in China and a Chinese SpaceX-like rocket, even if slightly less efficient, could perform commercially very well due to the iron curtain which separates the US and Chinese launch markets. This is probably why Chinese investors are more than willing to support SpaceX-like designs. These designs are proven, and yet the startups adopting these designs are protected from the company which originally came up with them. Typically, Europe doesn't have this advantage, and today a significant part of European commercial payloads have been captured by SpaceX. And this is why in the future, European launch startups will have to come up with a competitive value proposition to hope to get satellite launches back from SpaceX. Finally, one other reason why Chinese space companies sometimes give the impression of excessively copying SpaceX designs is bad marketing. Now, this one is my personal opinion here. And while I feel there's no problem for a company to adopt SpaceX's designs because that's just the way competition works in an open market, what's more regrettable is that many Chinese startups seem to invest very little in marketing material. This cutting of corners sometimes leads to distasteful reproductions of SpaceX's own branding, such as the reuse of SpaceX's logo, 
or SpaceX's livestream overlay, the appearance of a space shuttle on a Chinese moon-based animation, or just launching a car into space, emulating Elon Musk's launch of a Tesla Roadster in 2018. That being said, Chinese space companies have come a long way. I've been a Chinese space content creator for more than five years now, and I've seen Chinese space marketing material grow in quality as these commercial companies grow in maturity. And to be fair to them, while Chinese launch companies are clearly taking a leaf out of SpaceX's book, it would be wrong to call their designs a simple control C, control V. When you start getting into the nitty gritty details, you notice that there are differences in terms of the payload capacity, the engine cycles and propellants aren't always the same. Chinese companies are also quite uniquely bullish on sea launch. And in some cases, parachute and splashdown recovery, as well as new control surfaces, are being developed. And finally, as always, I want to say a special thank you to my patrons on Patreon.com and YouTube memberships for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support my independent coverage of the Chinese space sector, feel free to join the community. And with that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.